gallon with you and Steve. This has become such a huge event, the night race here, but now it's an elimination race. Yeah, well, it's electric. It's the idea. NASCAR runs all over the country, but these big spread out racetracks, but not here at Bristol. It's the Coliseum. It is jammed in. As a competitor, it's the That's one racetrack you can you feel the fans. They are right on top of you. That energy, that excitement. This scenario for Kevin, I think he's built for this, just like you said, Jeff, and you know him really well, having worked with him in the past. I think the guy looks at this as like, this is how, this is how I make my name. This is how I become an icon. This is how I really, you know, raise the level of who I am. I, I, I'm going to win this race in a, in a moment where it looks like it's totally impossible. My back's against the wall. He said it earlier in the year. They don't know us. This is what we are about. He's going to prove it tonight. Yeah. I'm going to go with Kyle Larson. I think Kyle Larson, what I saw yesterday in practice, he just looked like he had the best car. He's very good at moving around the racetrack. That's going to be important tonight. We're going to see cars run to the bottom. We're going to see him against the wall. He loves all of that and any of it. So I think Kyle Larson's a guy tonight. I'm going to take the guy Rick you said was comfortable because he was in. Christopher Bell, who drives that 20 car, he's the only playoff driver guaranteed to advance. He's already into the next round. He says he loves this racetrack. He loves this race. That energy, that excitement, and a little bit of that comfort, that'll be the driving factor for Christopher Bell. He's my pick. And again, 16 drivers, all with an opportunity for the championship. But after tonight, that will be whittled down to 12. Drivers are all strapped in. Let's fire the engines. That means we go trackside for the command. Here to give the command to start engines for tonight's Bass Pro Shops Night Race, please welcome noted conservationist Johnny Norris the founder of Bass Pro Shops, joined by some of his favorite fishing buddies and the next generation of conservationists. To start us off tonight, the voice of champions, Michael Buffer. Good evening once again, race fans. The, the, pardon me, the track is ready, the drivers are ready, the cars are ready. Bristol, are you ready? Racing fans, and the millions watching around the world. It's Bristol, baby. Let's get ready to rumble! It's a beautiful Saturday night in America, and on behalf of all the outfitters that wake up every day excited to serve our customers with everything they need to do in the great outdoors, on our 50th anniversary of Bass Pro Shops, we are very proud to sponsor the Great American Night Race. We proudly dedicate this race to all the sportsmen and women in this country, to our conservation partners. Most of all, we dedicate it to the next generation of anglers and hunters and conservationists. Jesse, get us started, buddy. that we just heard there before the command. The engines are fired. We're ready to go. We're racing at night at Bristol. It happens so fast that you forget to breathe. Just gets you jacked up as a driver. Damn, I'm ready to rip somebody's freaking head off. So high-paced and no time to relax. Bristol's one of those tracks that definitely has you up on the wheel. You know, have your elbows up the entire time. It's just a very intense place to race. It's an intense place to just make laps, honestly. It's an intense track. I mean, it, it is. It lives up to the hype. Saturday night under the lights. That's the coolest place to go race. It made me want to be a race car driver, so this atmosphere is unmatched. It's uh, just a, a real thrill to be a part of this, this event this year talking to me a little bit about some of the challenges of this track, some of the bumps down in one and two. What are some things you're thinking about? Yeah, just thinking about uh, my poor qualifying effort now. I'm going to figure a way forward, so got to work it out for us, but got the right team and group to, to fight through it tonight. Got to be around those last 100. Or win a championship. I would describe the mood in the four camp as we ride on board with the Hunt Brothers Pizza camera. 
as quiet confidence. Rodney Childers said Kevin Harvick went out, made a 45 lap run in practice, didn't say a word on the radio, plugged in his digital radio and said, don't touch it. 66 miles, stage one and stage two, both 125 laps. That leaves a final stage of 250 laps. A long final stage, half the race. Fuel window, over 150 laps. So stage one and stage two, no problem. That final stage will absolutely require a pit stop. All right, Steve, so the fuel window is 150 to 160, but what about these tires? Uh, we saw in the Xfinity Series last night, tires lasted. Old tires actually won the race. Yeah, old tires won the race last night in the Xfinity Series. Now, the Cup Series is next-gen, a very different tire. It's a bigger wheel, but much the same. In practice, some of the fastest laps were run 35, 40, 45 laps on the tires. So this is going to be a little throwback. Elliot Sadler throwback. Remember when Elliot Sadler won it on old, old, old tires? This is going to be a grind. You heard Elliot, all right, Chase Elliot already concerned about where he starts yep. because I don't think we're going to see a lot of pit stops. These drivers are going to have to figure it out. Right. I don't know. Where he's... The last great Coliseum, the site of the cut race for round number one of the Cup Series as they are fighting for a championship. Green flags in the air. We're racing at Bristol. giving us this view on board with Briscoe as he's falling no, back in that third spot now. Standard. Blaney just behind him. Standard. They shift different. They shift like this. Just push Blaney in the middle of the racetrack. Going to try to get on the outside. This 14 right there jumps in the gas. And the, 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 drive, the, the transmission the is exit. actually the drive. Facing down the straightaway. The, uh, Again, uh, the 14 will struggle off corner here. Axel, no, he surprised the 14 of Briscoe. He's not going to surprise him this, though, this time, though. Briscoe's going to try to get in his throttle. Wow, Blaney gave him no room whatsoever. Foreshadowing there, guys. We saw a pass already early in this race on the outside. Oh, it's going to happen. We know the group's going to move to the outside. Yeah, I mean, all the way back in the pack. The back half the pack. A lot of guys way up the racetrack using that high groove. It's another guy using that top as well. Kyle Larson running this in front of the leaders. So 27 laps in and some playoff implications already. See the 22 of Legato, he's lost some spots. He's down to 18. He's had a lot of pressure coming from behind. He's been struggling a little bit. Kyle Bush, he's driving forward, Marty. He has gained one spot, Jeff, and I talked to Ben Bayshore about how they're approaching this race, coming in barely below the cut line. Ben told me, honestly, it's three races and one for us. This first stage is massive for us in the 18 team. We have to get stage points because we know Chase Briscoe starting second. He's likely going to get stage points, and we have to match that. So they have to come up through the field and know how quickly they have to do it. And Jeff, he also said something interesting in his interview. He said, I have to get comfortable with being loose. What does he mean by that here at Bristol? Well, what he was talking about, Marty, Maybe is that come off the corner. You know, this car, especially this this year's car right. is very hard to drive when the there. back of the car is not attached to the racetrack. Feel like it wants to spin out. It's hard yep. to be aggressive with that. So in there order to go remember. fast all night long, if you don't have a little bit of that, eventually it's never going to turn. It's not going to turn like you want it to. So Can y'all remember Jeff Gordon, 2002, loose, Rusty so Wallace was loose. Lady up to second, Almirola leading. You're watching NASCAR Cup Series playoffs for Bristol. It's the Bass Pro Shop. transition race. right there, like the 77 right there. When you transition from that, you get Same loose. The rear end just slides. Auto a tire down on the 21, and now the caution has come out. All right, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up. That's J.J. Yaley in the 15. They both, it seemed, I think both of those cars have right fronts go down at the same time. What, what the, what, what's going on with that, Steve? I don't Same. know, but the right rear on this 21 car is missing the lettering as well. well so I don't Same. know if he hit the wall before or after the right front went down. Yeah, he went into turn three and had his tire problem and went up, got in the wall, and then the 15 had his problem down the straight. Interesting. Right yeah. side tires and right out of his pit stall. Yeah, Seven. I wonder if it's a wear thing or maybe there's something on the racetrack. Seems kind of odd. Let's take a look. Yeah, a lot of the tire issues that we've had this year aren't aren't tired they, they take a while to develop uh 
you know, it takes several laps for this, you know, for a tire to fail, right? Kevin Harvick said his car was building free, fairly happy with the handling of it, though. He did say, though, the brakes are shaking like crazy. They have a definite wobble to them. We'll certainly keep an eye on that, Kim. And in the middle there, Kyle Larson told crew chief Cliff Daniels he needs help on the entry, just two free. It's going to be four tires and snowbo fuel right there on the bottom. Chase Briscoe said he was just way too tight, couldn't do anything with it. The last seven laps, he told us he, it felt like his power steering went out, Dave. Leader Ryan Blaney all the way around turns three and four. Hard left turn into Histo. He'll get four Goodyear tires at Snoko Fuel. Just Our a little bit just out here after Denny Hamlin. Anything. His car was migrating to the tight side on the exit of the corners to get an adjustment for that, Dylan. Christopher Bell started off a little bit tight on this run, but by the end of it, he said we are really, really good. No changes, four tires and fuel for Bell, and here's the race off pit road. Almost a dead heat coming off of pit road, but it was Hamlin by inches in front of Ryan Blaney. We'll get ready for the restart. We get out. Echo, we start so again, Kozlowski Wallace up front, and not a great start there for Bubba Wallace in the 45. Brad Kozlowski surges out ahead. You will see that all night long, that inside line going to struggle all the way back through the field. Everybody's giving up a couple rows or a couple positions just to take that outside line. Front. Yep. Says he had a right front flat, Steve, but he's trying to get a hold to come down. I can't imagine how frustrating that must be as a driver, Jeff. There's the hole to get off some timber cap. Now he's got to come all the way back around to his side of timber. I don't know, coincidence? Or just bad luck? Right, right, three yeah. Fords, the 21 of Harrison Burton, a Rick Ware racing car, and now the two of Cedric. Three Fords, three flat right fronts. This is huge for Cedric. He was not that great in points anyway. This is a major setback, Marty. Yes, you're right, Jeff. Came in below the cut line. This is going to be a huge setback for Austin Timber. A green flag stop at Bristol will normally lose you two spots at least. Jeremy Bowen making the call, though, for two more wow. Goodyear tires here to make sure right they spots. got it. They yeah. can see it with the right flag spot. Austin Timber, his playoffs in jeopardy now after losing multiple laps here at Bristol. We'll see how many exactly he loses, Rick. So now let's just make sure the two knows he can leave off here. Let's take a look at it right here. Yeah, flat right front tire just, oh man, straight up the hill. It definitely just went flat. It looks almost identical to what we saw in the 21 car. This time, Eric Almarola spinning in that 10. So to your point, Rick, about the Fords, they, you know, they all share information. So whatever they believe, air pressure, camera settings, toe settings, I don't think it is. I don't know if they are all just randomly going down, right? These are all the same manufacturer. No. I don't think it's a like forward issue as far as aero or something specific. It's more of an information Steve. concern, right? We are we are literally around the same lap. We're, you know, we're 45 laps in. We had the two right front tires on the 15 and the 21. Now we're about 40 laps, 45 laps into the next run since that pit stop where we're seeing tires again. So around 40 to 45 laps is when these tires are starting to give these guys issues. So you watch the 12 go up, that's pretty hard contact. There yes. might be suspension damage, and then the 10 spins out just because it's, you know, everything's happening so fast. Dale, to your point, I believe these tires are being damaged early when the air pressure is the lowest, right? That's a dangerous situation. Hopefully nobody was hurt from that equipment. Dale, back to your point, right? 45 laps. We've had a Rick Ware Ford. We've had the 21, the 2, and now the 12. They all share information. Now it is, what can you change here? Camber, you're kind of locked in. Can you get enough air pressure in it? See for yourself. Stage one there, the one. Can you see this car sparking? Oh, it's a bad job. I'm gonna break. There you go. Feels like something's bad. Probably gonna break. All these other cars, you can't. This isn't Michigan. You just can't tiptoe by it. it, it it's like rush hour traffic. Yeah, it's, a fishbowl. Steve, it sounded like he said tow link, and we've heard that so many times at different racetracks. The tow link bends, and could it be something that he came onto the apron now? He's on pit road, Frames so they're going to the pit box now, Dave. He's in now, and we'll see what they can do. You see the wedge wrench is going in there. They're changing the entire setup in the back of that car, hoping it'll just stay up off the track, Steve. But and there's only so much adjustment. These coilover shocks have basically a little hydraulic thing that you adjust. It's not like jack screws, like the old car. So depending on how you set them, there's a little bit of wiggle room, but there's only just a minimum and maximum you can raise the back of this car. It's not a lot, Rick. It's like a half inch, like the thickness of your finger. That's it. Once you get at that high, you're gonna have to stop jacking up and make some manual adjustments. 
I'm about Brad Keselowski, yeah. who just goes 5 and 12. He has yet to come to pit road. I'm not. That's my kind of pit strategy. That's the easiest thing I can do from a common pit box drink water to just stay on the racetrack. Great call right here from the sixth car. Matt McCall, I know they're, you know, first year together or first year together at RFK. And there he is on the bottom, a late model racer himself, driven a lot of. And NASCAR has posted him for not making a I don't know what you're going to do. So now the tow link's broken. Yeah. So there was a suspension item. Now I think it's the tow link as well. But if this car just needs to go behind the wall, change the suspension, they're going to go 25, 50 laps down and hope there's a lot of attrition. I know that's hard to say, but that's that's all I have left. Make the necessary repairs. Wow. Three laps to go here at Bristol in stage one. Brad has not come off the bottom of the racetrack this entire run. Here he goes to the top. Trying to find some speed. Bill has to go to the bottom. Stay on that dirty air. Brad, oh, a little bit loose right there. Under two laps to go. Keslowski trying to hold off Bell. It's Keslowski, Bell, Kyle Busch, Briscoe, and Larson. They're all in the top five. The final lap of stage one. Bowman, Busher, Reddick, Byron, and Mark Trex Jr. in the top ten. Coming out of four for the final time, and Keslowski is going to win the stage here at Bristol. 2012 Cup Series <laughs> First stage win for Brad Keselowski in 2022 as the work continues on Ryan Blaney on pit road. Four leaders.